different tools to work with the ink. So I'm going to talk about the blending brushes. Now the inspiration behind the blending brushes is simply because I am an inker. I ink every day. I love to ink. I'm, I am one with the mini blending tool. I can blend anything I need to. I got this, right? I know some people aren't so comfortable. Some are a little blend challenge. Some want to do other, other things. And there's no shame in that. There really is not. Um, when I work with the blending tool, there's a lot of things that I like to do. I'll just go in with purple because that would be unpredictable. I always like to store on my minis, I always like to store a blending foam underneath each pad. So every color has its dedicated foam. I'm going to pounce that down. Now usually with a blending tool you want to have a slight angle to it and you want to work in that circular motion and we want to blend. Easy, easy, easy. No lines, no nothing. Easy to do, right? We can go more intense if we want. Easy to do. I can go back in, really build up that layer. Great. But when it came to stencils, I found that even though I was very light-handed with a stencil and I would go in and I would try to do the little pounce and dance, a couple things would happen. One, you'd have a really nice little ring. No matter how light I was, I still found myself that when I take that mini blending tool, when I stamp that down, I'm still, I'm still gonna get that on my initial, even though I'm really light about it. And then I try to, you know, go in and kind of get it to blend. And by the time I'm done, it's just, it's dark, but I've solved my problem, I blended that. The other thing I found was that with a stencil, it would catch into my phone. Right? Especially these because you know I'm not just making a polka dot. I'm making you know little tiny flowers and leaves that have veins and everything that wants to catch into this piece of foam. So I thought I need to figure out like different ways that I can blend. And it's a good thing that I have a friend, Joy, who loves to go to Sephora every time we go to Disney and I just walk in and she's doing her thing and I'm in the brush aisle looking at these like there's a lot of brushes. Like, I have a lot of choices, big brushes, poofy brushes, stiff brushes, angled brushes, and I thought, these brushes all do something different? Oh yeah, they do. So I started thinking, okay, I wanna do some brushes. And I, of course, went on YouTube, looked around, a lot of stencil brushes out there, people loving stencil brushes. And there are things I liked about them because I own them, and there are things that I hate about them. First thing, a brush is, once I use them, I had ink all over the brushes, I throw them in a bag, and now I've got ink all over the bag and ink all over the handles. The other thing was all these different sizes of brushes that I didn't know when I needed what brush. So I thought, let's create a blending brush. The soul has a two pack. I have mine color coded, pretty simple. Get yourself some washi tape, which I know is on very limited supply for most of us, but you're gonna take some washi tape and you're going to mask off both sides of that little bump that's there. Take some acrylic paint on a paintbrush or nail polish, I don't care what you do. Let that dry and now I have a color coded one. And here's the thing about a blending brush, okay? This is a blending brush, it is a natural fiber. Okay, it's not, hey, damn shoe. It's not synthetic, it's a natural fiber, but this is gonna give me control on how to apply ink. So let's go into this flowery stencil. And let's use pinks and reds because Debbie Shoe is here, because that's what we should do. Although you know I would go brown and I'll end up going brown, but I can take that. Now, all I need to do with this, I can use it with oxides or inks. I know in the past I said if you have blending tools, you need a blending tool for oxide and a blending tool for ink. Do not use the same. I can use the same blending brush because it's easy to clean. All I need to do is wipe it off on a baby wipe and it will clean it from one medium to the next. I did decide that I wanted one dedicated to a color family because you're gonna get a much truer color. So all you need are seven. They happen to fit in a mini Distress Ink tin. Okay, that's all you need. So you've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and brown. Okay. So when I go to use this, again, it just depends on the ink that I want to go in. Let's start with some oxide. I'm just going to take this brush and I'm just going to go right into that ink pad. I'm going to place this down and now I'm just going to go in and pounce. And I have that ability to just go in and be very, very aggressive and pounce that color right through there. Now if I want to change this, all I need to do if I'm going to clean this off is just go right here on a baby wipe, dry it off. My medium's gone, now I can go into another ink if I want. Maybe I'll take a little bit of candied apple. This time I'll go to Distress Ink, because I want to. Doesn't really matter. And now I'm gonna go back, and I'm just going to pounce a little bit. Now, if I wanted to focus some color, because right now I'm just gonna do a little shading, I'll show you what I love about these brushes as far as focusing color. When I focus color, this is what I wanted uh, in a brush more than anything. And that was the ability to use the brushes quite different. So when I go to close it, I'm gonna slide this up. That's gonna cover the bristles. There's a bump there that holds the cap. Close it and it's done. But what's cool about these brushes and having that little sliding mechanism that kind of keeps everything safe and protected 
is that I can go in with colors, let's take some wild honey, and now maybe I want to do the center of the flower. So instead of that big pouncy brush, this gives me the ability to take this and slide it up my brush and make my brush instead of flaring out, making it a much solid, stable brush to focus my color. So now just holding my fingers right under that ring, that ring that slides up, I just position on my hands. I'm gonna pick up my color and now I can go right in and I have the ability just to focus color right in that area. Super simple and I don't have to change the brush, I just change the way I use the brush, right? And then I'm able to create depth with that. Now, even if you weren't gonna do stencil because you're like, Tim, I'm not redecorating my bathroom, I don't need stencils and flowers. For those that are blend challenged, this is also a really great blending brush. For those that just really can never figure out that blending tool and the foam and that circular motion, these are fantastic to create backgrounds just using the brush itself. So here I can take that, let's maybe take some salty ocean, okay? I can swipe that. Now if I'm, going, if I'm going to use the entire brush, now my finger's on the other side of this ring. So it's all about where you put your finger in relation to that bumpy ring that slides up, right? If I want the full brush, I'm gonna keep these pulled back. And now I can just go in and I can really apply the color however I want. And you can be super aggressive with that and you're gonna get that blend right away. And if you think, okay, well I like that blend but I want it a little darker on the edges. Okay, well you have the technology for that. You know that if I want it darker, I'm gonna concentrate the bristles right in that area and now I can add a darker color or a darker tone right on that edge. So you're able to get a blend without even worrying about a blend. And that's why we did the blending brushes. So do they replace these? Gosh, no. If I had to do a whole book like this, I'd need a nap. I mean, that, like, that's a lot of inking. But there are those things that you do. There are those surfaces, those pieces of ephemera, those things that just the blending tool is just gonna be way too much. And this just gives you another inking option that if you, if you wanted to create that light background, that subtle all over color tint, using stencils, the blending brush was really to me that answer. So I use these and obviously I still use the mini blending tool. So I just think it's, it's cool. It's just a way to kind of think about how to use the tool and how to get the most out of it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Scrap Time videos here on YouTube so you'll be the first to see all our videos from Creativation. And follow us on Instagram at Scrap Time Photos to see photos straight off the show floor.